what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be sharing with you my gathering strategy for rise of kingdoms now one question that i get asked a ton is what is the best gathering commander in rise of kingdoms and i always find that question funny because it's obvious to me when i hear that that the person asking is you know very new to the game probably less than a week old at, at playing the game uh, because if you go through all the commanders and you kind of read their individual skills it's pretty straightforward as to which commander is best at gathering which resource um, but we are going to go over that in this video because you guys do have a lot of questions about that and on top of that i'm going to go over a little bit more of the theory and my strategy for gathering kind of what I aim for when I am gathering now the first thing is when should you be gathering right because you only have a certain number of armies that you can send out of your city at any given time so this includes armies that are killing barbarians or participating in rallies or, or forts or anything like that um, or armies that you need to fight a war so when should you be using some of these army slots for actually gathering resources on the map well for me, the answer to that is any time that your AP meter is completely drained, you're not fighting in a war, and you're not participating in any events. That is when you should be gathering all the time, 24-7. If you're about to log off, you should send out all the gatherers that you can to the highest level nodes that you can complete, uh, and you should be gathering in all of your downtime, right? That's the most productive thing that your account can be doing while you're not playing or participating in events or fights. Now, the only exception to that is the Mightiest Governor event and later stages of the KVK event, uh, because if you send out gatherers during these events, you run the risk of them dying and they fill up your hospital and they're expensive to uh, re replace and heal up siege units. You never want to be in that position. Um, but with that being said, let's talk more about how can you maximize your gathering speed amongst your gathering commanders. The first place I'm going to point you guys isn't towards the commanders specifically, but it's going to be to the top left corner. If you tap on your character profile, you can actually click commander here. And this is where you can actually add some small buffs to certain commanders. And as you can see here, the tax officer is one of the first ones that you will have unlocked in your city. This will give you a 5% gathering speed to that commander, which is really great. Uh, the other one is the supply captain. Uh, the supply captain gets also 5% gathering speed, but they additionally get 5% troop load. So what's interesting with what I've picked here, and you may be a little bit surprised with these choices. Um, these two commanders are both universal gathering commanders. So it doesn't necessarily matter which um type of resource they're gathering um they're gonna get that gathering speed and so because they're universal and they can gather any uh any resource pretty effectively right um their gathering speed inherently is a little bit lower than the others and so what i do is actually use the uh, tax officer and supply captain uh commander buffs to kind of bring them up closer to the gathering speed of the other commanders um, and in that way what i'm ensuring is that when i send out my gatherers they all come back around the same time and the reason that i aim for that is because it minimizes the amount of times that i have to log into the game throughout the day um, because what you want to do is always have five gatherers out gathering when you're not playing and so if i only have to check the game um, to send out my five uh, gatherers and then when i come back later all five of them are already back and then i send them out again that's easier than you know sending all of them out and then you know uh, 45 minutes later one of them comes back and the other ones are still out for another hour and 20 minutes well now i have to log in just to send that one out again um and so what i like to do is maximize my gathering speed while also trying to keep all of the armies gathering around the same speed if that makes sense it, it's difficult recording videos when you have <laughs> when you have names like this on the screen bro so with that being said make sure you're using these two commander buffs so let's talk about gatherers in in order with which you're going to get them right the most common gatherer is centurion because he is a advanced commander he's a a green commander if you want to call him that um he is the easiest to completely max out which means in the early game he's going to be pretty useful because you can level him up pretty fast and you're also going to get a ton of sculptures of him so getting his third skill to five is going to be pretty 
pretty easy um so in the early game he's gonna be great in the later game um you're still gonna use him of course because he's a universal gatherer um but at the same time uh you know he's he's not gonna be the fastest at pretty much anything later down the line when all of your gatherers are the same level it's worth noting that you do want his third skill maxed before the rest of them there's no way to guarantee that all you can do is really get him up to three stars and hope that all of your skill points go into that third one now the elite blue tier is actually where a majority of the gatherers live and that is going to be sarka we also have constance and we have gaius marius now two of these you can receive from silver and gold keys one of them you can only get from the metal shop and we'll talk about that in a second the two gatherers that you can get from the keys are going to be Gaius Marius and Sarka. If we take a look at their skills, their second skill is going to be the one that increases their gathering speed. So Sarka increases gathering speed of any resource by 18%. If you remember, Centurion was only 10%, but he did get a little bit of extra load, which she also gets from her third skill. Um, but regardless, she gets uh, an 18% uh, buff to gathering speed for any specific type of resource. Gaius Marius, on the other hand, gives you a 20% gathering speed, but for food, the rest are only 15. So what's interesting to know here is that he's actually specialized in food gathering, right? It's slightly better than Sarka um, and slightly worse in as it's slightly worse than Sarka at everything other than food, right? Still better than Centurion in, in all ways, but um, he is primarily best at gathering food. He gathers it faster than pretty much any other commander, right? Next, we can take a look at Constance. Now, again, she's only obtained through the metal shop. Her second skill will give you a um, bonus gathering speed to wood. So she's essentially the same thing as Gaius Marius, but for wood gathering rather than um, food gathering. What's interesting about her and what makes her slightly better than Gaius is that her last skill gives you 10% additional resources upon completion of gathering. So that's really good. Um, and that kind of justifies her being a little bit harder to obtain. And we're going to talk about that now. So in order to get Constance, you actually have to go down to campaign and you have to tap on expedition and then you can tap on the shop in the left corner and you'll see her heads live right here in the metal store and they're 400 medals per uh, head. And unfortunately that is kind of expensive in the early game and the, the early game is when you want her the most um so when it comes to early game right you should spend probably all of your medals on constants in the early game um until you get that second skill maxed out or maybe even that fourth skill maxed out uh, because having a completely maxed out gatherer is gonna be really good in the long run right the sooner you max her out the sooner you start reaping the rewards of that and you're gonna be gathering with constants for the rest of the game right no matter how long you play this game she is going to be a valuable gatherer right and so the sooner you max her out the better you can forget about it she's done you don't have to worry about her anymore and then you can start to focus more on other things in this shop so i would recommend getting her uh, as early as you can because she is you know like i said she is the pretty much the best wood special gatherer in the game um there's no other uh there's no other gatherers that specialize in wood gathering so keep that in mind um and you know you can kind of set her and forget her let's talk about my girl Joan of Arc I absolutely love Joan of Arc she is the only gatherer in the epic tier and what's useful about Joan of Arc is her second skill it gives you a gather speed bonus of 25% to any gathering resource right it doesn't matter what she's gathering she's gonna be gathering it faster than any other commander we've talked about in this video so that makes her pretty much the best universal gatherer in the game by far that's just one reason to love Joan of Arc there's a million other reasons to love Joan of Arc she also gets a 25% load bonus which is really really awesome um so yeah she is going to be super crucial for gathering uh, and during the early game she'll be an absolute beast let's move on to the legendary tier because yes there are legendary tier gatherers um the first one we'll talk about is Ashida um Ashida gives you a 30% bonus speed uh, to gathering food and 20% to everything else. So now you notice I don't actually have this maxed out because since he is a legendary commander, getting sculptures for him is a bit more difficult than the rest. Um, so that is unfortunate. Um, so with him, I wouldn't take him past two stars until this last one is uh, is completely up to five. Um, he's going to be really great at gathering food. 
he's going to be even better than Gaius Marius if you can get this to five. The only problem is that um, his level is going to be pretty low for a while. And we'll talk about what level I typically recommend getting your commanders to for gathering. Um, the next one we can talk about is Sunduk. She is actually the only gold specific gatherer in the game, which is a little bit frustrating because she is a legendary um, commander. However, um, it's worth noting that gold is going to be probably the last uh, resource that you focus on because really you're going to need a lot of gold for t5 and for some of the later researches and so you'll have a bit of time to kind of accumulate sculptures from her before gold gathering becomes absolutely crucial so keep her in mind um again don't take her past two stars then we can talk about finally uh, cleopatra she is the og uh, legendary gatherer and her second skill increases the gathering speed for stone up to 30 percent which is really great she also has a troop load bonus um there's a lot to love about her if you manage to expertise her she also has her expertise gives you extra resource packs uh for completing gathering which is really really cool because resource packs can't be stolen from enemy players so that's awesome um but that's a lot of sculptures so you can see i'm i'm still like 160 sculptures away from that unfortunately so where does that leave us that leaves us with three commanders that don't care what resource they're gathering two commanders that prefer to gather food one commander that prefers to gather wood one commander that prefers to gather stone and one commander that prefers to gather gold so ideally what you want to do is send the commanders that specialize in a specific resource to that resource node um, but the cool thing is that you can actually bring a second commander with you and so you kind of have to decide you know who's going to get a secondary commander and who isn't right because there's not enough commanders to fill out um five armies of two commanders each right because that would be 10 commanders total and at the time of recording this we only have eight gathering commanders in the game so what we have to do is ensure that the two commanders that are by themselves are gathering um almost as fast as some of the the lower tier pairs now the other thing to know is that you can increase your gatherer speed by using an item in the boost section of your item bag um, and that will increase your gathering speed by 50 percent, which is super good you should be using these items pretty much all the time like as long as you have some of these to spare and you're going to be logging in lo enough to be sending out gatherers um then you should be using these items right if you know i'm not going to log in today don't waste one of these uh, items but otherwise you should pretty much always be using these on top of that there are runes that you can get at the center of the map or any other holy site um, and that will also give you some of them give you gathering um, gathering speed increases some are specific to a certain resource others are just gathering in general so it's really good to check to see if there's any general gathering runes out there um, because that's just it's just good to have if you're going to be gathering and not playing the game and if you don't know what runes are i have an entire video on that just check that out of my channel it talks about all the different buffs that you can get in the game so with all that being said let's talk quickly about the talent points for your gathering commanders what you're going to notice is that my gatherers are all at least level 40 um, unless I haven't finished maxing their skills, but that's a different story, obviously. Um, and a lot of people say to bring your gatherers to level 37 and then forget about them. Um, for me, I, I don't like that theory and I've heard it a million times and I, I'm probably in the minority here. Um, but I, for me, I would rather just bring them to 40 and, and here's why, um, when you bring them to 40, you can get them to five stars, which is going to give you five more talent points, right? So let's look in here and see what you can get when they're level 40. Well, obviously this first row is all specific to a certain type of gathering um ideally you would want to go and get uh the more the better soon or sooner than later right because this gives you six percent more resources upon completion whereas these all just increase the gathering speed um it's up to you right like in theory this is the, the one you should go for first but if you really need stone for that next wall upgrade then maybe you can start to you know go for stone first and then go up here it, it's up to you but obviously you want to finish out the gathering tree right if you have a commander and all you're going to be doing with them is gathering you want to finish out that tree because superior tools increases the gathering speed of all kinds of resources by 25 percent so it doesn't matter what you're gathering this is going to increase the gathering speed by 25 percent, which is incredibly good right so we've already established you want to completely max out this skill well what what level what's the lowest level you have to be in order to do that well the answer is 37 right because you need 36 talent points to get all the way up there and you get one talent point per level and level one doesn't give you one so you need to be level 37 
the reason that I bring them to 40 is because I actually really like these two um, talents here. This increases the March speed of siege units by 30%. Now, siege units are frustratingly slow. They are insanely slow. And the problem with that is if you have to send them far away, you have to wait for them to get to the resource node before they start gathering it. So the March speed actually matters a lot for gatherers because, you know, if you can decrease the March speed from, you know, seven minutes to five minutes, well, that's pretty cool, right? That's the, I, I think that that is useful to get. The second one is tourniquet. And this is essentially, it'll reduce the amount of severely wounded units that you have by 6%. So hopefully you don't ever get attacked. Um, but if you do, this will decrease the number of siege that gets sent to your hospital, right? And that's good because that's going to save you resources when it comes to having to heal those siege units, right? So this will actually, um, in, in a, in a indirect way will actually save you resources in the long run, right? So I think that's really useful. So in order to max out these two, you need at least six talent points, right? And so when you go from 37 to 40, you get three talent points. And so you can max one of these out. And then to get the other three points, well, you can just bring them from four stars to five stars, and that'll give you five more talent points. And so you can put the other three in the other one, and then you have two points left over. You can do pretty much whatever you want with them. Um, for me, I put them both in defense for him, but in others, I have like one and one, or you could put them over here if you wanted. It, it doesn't matter what you do with those last two. It's such a small, insignificant amount that it doesn't make much of a difference no matter where you put it. And so that's why I bring my gatherers to five stars. I understand the argument of wanting to save that experience for a, an another commander that matters more but to me these talents are useful um, and I think that they're worth getting so that's what I do for all my gatherers if I can do it now finally let's talk about the gathering pairs that I personally use and send out to uh, to resource nodes on the maps right so one thing to know is that this may be different for you for a couple of reasons one my legendary gathering commanders are have more skills than your average player or a player who's new or free to play or whatever so certainly take this with a grain of salt on top of that um i do have the ability to send out five marches right some of you may not have that ability you may only have four marches or three marches or something like that um if that's the case if you have only four marches well then good news you can send two gathering commanders to every single node and you'll be good um and you kind of max that out um, but let's take a look at what I typically do, right? So one thing that I like to do is have my city nearby the Alliance resource plot, because this provides an insane amount of resources for the entire Alliance. You typically will get, um, probably six times more resources from this than any regular resource node or maybe more um so it depends on how many alliance members you're sharing it with but regardless um typically what i do the first army that i send out is is going to be to this right because it's the most significant gathering point on the map for me um so when you tap to join what you'll notice is that the game will automatically calculate what it thinks would be the fastest or most optimized pair for this node and that's what i want right that's what i want i want the fastest pairing possible for this node because i want to gain as much resources in the short amount of time that it's up had this been stone right had it been stone then it would have actually put um uh, cleopatra here and in the second slot it would have been joan of arc because cleopatra we talked about for me she gets a 30 percent bonus gathering speed to stone which is faster than the 25 percent that joan gets and faster than the 18 percent that sarka gets so super useful to know that but keep in mind the game will automatically calculate so you want your fastest march to go to this one because this is going to be the last one to come home regardless um so yeah so that's what i would do here so we'll send that army out and we're going to verify we're not a robot so now how are we going to fill the other four armies that we're going to be gathering with well let's go back to the city and we can think now for a second um one thing to know is if again if you need a ton of stone for your wall or a ton of a specific resource for something else well then in that case i would send probably all my gatherers to that specific resource so that way you can build it up and you can do the next upgrade that you need so that's important to know um for me i'm in a position where i have plenty of each resource for upgrades uh, as far as upgrades go um but i don't really have that many resources for like a war scenario but we're, we're getting there right we're new to the kingdom we're getting there um so what i now am going to do is look inside my alliance territory and see where are there available gathering nodes right because you could right you could use the feature 
feature where you just search for the highest level node and it'll tell you where it is and this is the closest one to me I'm only 10 kilometers away from this specific level six and ideally that would be the one that I would go for but I'm making an exception here because my alliance needs me to gather inside the boundaries of the alliance because we're building forts and we're building flags and we're doing researches and all that stuff and so I encourage you guys if you are in an alliance that is still growing gather within the um the boundaries of the alliance right and unfortunately there's no way for the game to automatically search right i wish there was a box here or check marks that just said like only search inside alliance territory or something that would be incredible but unfortunately there's not an option for that lilith if you're watching hey listen that's a great idea right incredible idea quality of life things yeah but anyway um what i could do is i could go around and i could search and say i could say okay well where am i gonna get a uh, level six node that's also within alliance territory and i'm just not gonna bother right i'm gonna take this level five because it's nearby my city and uh i don't have to worry about it right it's it's almost as good oh actually this one isn't a completed node so i'm actually gonna go to this one because this one is so if i'm gonna gather at this node what you'll notice is that the game again automatically populates an army that it thinks will be the fastest for gathering at this specific node and that might be true right if we look here um she gathers food at 20 percent um he gathers uh food at 20 percent as well and so she's a legendary maybe she is the best option uh for this specific node in in, in in terms of gathering this node the fastest but if you guys remember from before Cleopatra is better at at farming stone than she is at farming wood so knowing that I'm also going to be sending an army to stone I'm not going to actually waste her on this uh, on this food node if you remember earlier we actually have two commanders that gather food right we have Gaius Marius and we have um Ishida. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Gaius Marius as the primary because he's a high level and we're going to do Ishida as the secondary because his level doesn't matter when he's secondary and now we have him gathering 20 percent speed here and 20 percent speed here and so we actually um aren't sacrificing anything in terms of commanders so again I don't know why the game thought that Cleopatra would be better probably because she's a higher rarity she's a legendary maybe i don't know um maybe yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure but um this is would be the optimal army for gathering uh food because they both have they're both focused on food right so let's send that out we'll, we'll get that done so now we've got um the alliance gatherer we've got the food gatherer let's look for wood now right so we're gonna look for wood so here's the level five logging camp i'm gonna go gather from it and what it's gonna do is again it's going to auto populate now Cleopatra we see her again because she's a legendary and the game thinks that she's incredible at gathering because she's a legendary which is true but again we know she's good for stone so we're gonna save her for stone I'm going to put um, I'm gonna put Constance as the primary and we don't have another wood specific um, gatherer so I'm gonna leave that blank right I'm gonna leave that empty because if you remember before we do have to uh, have specific armies that only have one gatherer right and unfortunately there's no pair for Constance um, so I'm gonna send her out alone I know Constance it sucks but it, it is how it is what it is all right next is gonna be stone I found this level five stone deposit we're gonna go gather from this because it's within Alliance territory now we see Cleopatra in her role right she's in her role um, so who are we gonna do as a secondary well we know there's no other commanders that focus on stone so what are we gonna fill that slot with we could fill it with um, we could fill it with Centurion because he doesn't care what he's gathering right um, but if we look who do we have left right what gatherers do we have left we have two available army slots one of them is going to go to the stone and then we'll have a final one um and we have cleopatra um we have centurion and if we look we only other the only other person we have is sunduk right she's the only other one now he gains a gather he has a gathering speed of 10 percent she has a gathering speed of either 20 for gold or 15 for fo food stone and uh, wood so well what i want to do is if we send a secondary with cleopatra then the last army is going to be alone right and if we do this then centurion's alone and his gathering speed is pretty bad so we don't want to send him alone um if we look out of the three commanders we have left uh, cleopatra is the best standalone of the three so i'm actually going to send her alone right i'm going to send her alone um oh it looks like an alliance member already sent one to the node no so we have to gather outside of alliance territory because there's no more stone deposits in alliance territory but whatever and so that leaves us with one more army that we can send out and the only two that we have left are centurion and sunduk 
and at this point we can send this army wherever we want right because he doesn't care about what he gathers she cares slightly more about gold um so ideally we should send this to a gold deposit because we haven't sent somebody to a gold deposit yet so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see where is the nearest gold deposit hopefully it's it's nearby and within alliance territory and there's not so i'm gonna send it to a level five gold deposit that's outside alliance territory unfortunately it won't help my alliance but I need a lot of gold because i'm about to be t5 and i'm gonna need it i don't have very much so we're gonna gather gold here and that will be the best setup that we could do in this event and so the idea here is that again we want to try to get them to come back around the same time right and if you remember correctly we sent out gaius marius a little bit before we sent out cleopatra and if you look even though she's alone she's gonna come back pretty close to the same time as gaius marius right pretty close and Constance is going to be in the same ballpark as well um so this is the way that I gather right um this is how I do it some people may have if you look see look this is going to gather the same almost the same speed as Cleopatra so the way that I have this set up is that all my gatherers are going to come back pretty close to one another and that minimizes the amount of time that I have armies not doing anything so let's see Constance boom right in the same ballpark right same ballpark all within 10 minutes of each other excellent job well done on New York you did a great job um and then when they all come back you know Joan of Arc will still be doing her thing um but regardless that's how I gather that way I have to only log in a couple times a day and send out all my gatherers you could do it another way this is how I do it hopefully this video helped you guys figure out how can you send out your gatherers to gather as fast and as efficiently as possible um, we talked about the levels and everything like that we talked about specific commander buffs and runes and all that good stuff um, so with that being said guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on it I would really really appreciate that and it does help my channel way more than you think if you're new around here subscribe and hit that Bell so that way you get notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video you'll find my twitch link in the description below make sure you go there and drop me a follow as well that way if you see me over there live even if I'm not playing rise of kingdoms you can stop by and ask me any questions you want about the game and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you in real time so you don't have to wait for me to see your comments and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace